Hey guys, hope everyone is well. Mel here. I hope you're having a fab week so far. As you can hear, I'm absolutely loaded with cold, so we'll keep this as short as possible. So you know today is our spooky video, and I've designed a fab little, if I do say so myself, witchy's spooky haunted house. Now I have designed the file specifically the download S PDF, even SPF PDF and I'll put it in the description box below. If anyone wants it, you can email me and I will send it over. I'm not leaving a link to this because I designed it specifically just for this video. So if you want it, you'll have to email me. I hope you don't mind there. I've even cut out some little ghosties and things to go along with this. And I've also cut everything out from greys and black torn papers. And I'm using some of my Craft Consortium Monochrome and drop, Ink Drops, sorry loaded absolute choked up here so i do apologize and the paper that i'm using is this one here there's a slight pinky gray tinge to it which you can't pick up on the video but that's what i'm going to be using so remember guys if you like the video please give it a thumbs up you know it really really helps my channel if you've not already maybe subscribe and hit the bell button to get notifications of my upcoming videos so no more talking from me it'll be a voiceover let's get started so that's me got everything cut out and I'm so excited. I really can't wait for you to see this in action. So I've cut plain light grey for the base, black for the roofs, a darker grey for the building and then the pattern paper layers. Now, first of all, what I'm going to do is ink and distress everything using some memento. I can't find my black suit at the moment, but I do find it later in the video. So I use that all over. Then I use it on the pattern layers, but you can leave that out if you don't want to i just want to give it a more distressed look i then go over it with some hickory smoke distress oxide and then my black suit that i find later and i also add this to the base too Next I'm just going in with the black suit round about the windows and all the edges just to give it a, even more distress. And then lastly what I'm going to do is take my paint pen and a slightly damp wet white. Now I don't mean straight out the packet damp, I mean I've been lying a little while damp. And what I do is I'm just adding some splodges onto the paper and then rubbing over with this slightly damp wet wipe. You could use a slightly damp cloth or anything you don't want it soaking you don't want to warp the paper you just want to give it a sort of even more distressed look so now that everything's all distressed and funky looking we're going to add vellum to the backs to add in the windows now you could cut this perfectly but i'm just using my pencil quickly here quickly drawn around them and then i'll cut them out and glue them on and i repeat that for all the windows and the window on the door, not the main door panel that you can see in the top corner where I've just sat my scissors. Don't add one to that big bit. Now that we've got the wee windows in, all we're going to do is fold all the score lines nice and easy. You just want to fold everything so it's ready to go. You'll see here the wee tab on the side, I do that the opposite way. And on the side buildings for the main part, I fold them the opposite way compared to everything else. Once I've got them done, I'm going to add on my pattern layers before I actually put it together. Now that we've got all the layers on, you can see here, I'm going to add on my little windows. So first of all, I've cut two of each of these. I want to give them a thicker layer. I'm going to glue them together. Then I'm going to distress them again with all the inks I used previously and then glue them onto the buildings. Really easy, nothing hard here.
So that's us ready to put the building together. So first of all, we're going to take the door and do it first. So we're just going to add glue to the tabs and work our way around. Then we'll flip it over and add that open panel piece onto the back. I'll use tacky glue so that I can move it about to get it in place. And then we will make up the building and the side pieces. After that, you're going to glue the side pieces into the building. Now, this is easier to see than to describe, but if you watch, you'll see how I've done it. You're basically sort of slotting them in and then using the tabs to glue inside the building. It makes sense when you see it. As you see, I'm just sort of slotting this up in and putting the wee tab underneath the small side and the large tabs on the small piece in the inside. I'm using my tacky glue again because it gives me more time to move everything into place and then I can push it from the inside and stick it down. So once you've got the second side on, after the, this one's done, you're, all you're going to do is glue the doorway on and that just gets glued to the front. You'll see I've got my glasses case in the inside of it. It just gives me something to push down on so that nothing moves. After that, we're going to add on the roofs. Really easy with the roofs, you'll see that one of them, the largest piece has a score, so you just make sure you fold that and put it on the right way. There's a slight overhang on both sides plus on the edge and you just centre it, glue it down and then repeat with the doorway roof and the wee side roofs. So now we're just going to make up the base and it's really easy to make up. You're going to fold back the large tabs and the wee side tabs on the two panels that are the same, glue them together to make your frame, then glue the large rectangles one on top of the other, saving the other piece for a wee while later.
Well, you see in amongst the template there was these little support tabs and they're all numbered. Now what you want to do is fold the tab part and you're going to glue the numbered part within the building. Now starting on the left side on the small building, the side panel, you'll start number one working along the front to the back. Now this is because I couldn't work out the angles to make an actual base support so you're going to have to glue these on individually. I do apologise but it's the only way you're going to have a support and so your building doesn't flop about. So as you see here I'm starting with number two, I should be starting with number one but I'm just gluing the numbered piece to the inside of the building with the tab pointing outwards and you'll see what we'll do with that in a moment. Once you've glued them all around we'll move on to the next step. So now that we've got all the wee pieces on, you'll see it looks a bit unusual, but this is because I couldn't work out the angles. So now what we're going to do is we're going to place this other piece from the base over or under or however you get it on. You're going to put this on and then you're going to pop the wee tabs all underneath and onto the back of it. Then you're going to work your way around, making sure all the tabs are in place and then you're going to glue them down. Now you might find if you've cut it by hand that one or two of your tabs are overhanging. You'll see the front one is totally flush but again if you've cut by hand you might find that it's a wee bit big so you'll need to trim it and then glue it down. Really easy but it gives you that support that you need. So now that the tabs are all in place and I've pushed down against my desk, all I have to do is glue this on top. But then is when I realise I haven't made an opening for my batteries. So I will adjust this on the template so when you get the template you'll have it. You can see I've cut it out by hand just so I can get my lights in. But don't worry, I've adjusted the pattern just for you. The only thing is you might have to trim around it when you put your pattern layer on. So all I'm going to do is glue my base on now. I do apologise that you didn't see that in the video. It was just... Let's blame the coldy flu bugs that I've got. So now that we've got that all done, we're going to take some scraps of the grey card or any colour card you want and we're going to cut out little sort of shutters or panels that look like wooden bits that you would put over abandoned buildings. And I'm just going to cut them randomly, then I'm going to ink them all up like I did before and glue them on top. You don't need to be fussy about this bit, you can add them any way you want and then add some others round about the actual building itself. Now what I want to do is make some roof tiles. So I've cut strips of the black card and I'm just quickly measuring them to the same size or even just a wee teeny bit bigger. And I'm going to cut a whole load of panels and then I'm going to push down on my desk to give it a slight curve, just you can see here. And then starting from the bottom, I'm going to glue these up. I'll cut some short and some long and just work my way up to give them tiles. I'm going to repeat this on all my roofs, but I'll just show you how I do this bit here. Once they're glued on, I'm going to ink them up with the Distress Oxide Hickory Smoke just to give it a bit more colouring and distress and everything. Just go wild. I forgot to say when you get to the top you want to fold one of those little panel roof tiles that you made in half and glue that right on top and that will hide all the tabs or the top parts of the tiles. Now you see here I repeat this all over adding them onto the rest of the roofs but also I'm ignoring these glue strings because I'm going to use these later so just leave them don't even worry about them. 
because they'll come in handy next. You'll see off camera here, I added on a sort of knocker, door knock thing, chopper, whatever you want to call it, and a little letter box. It's not the perfect, I cut it by hand, it's kind of wiggly, but you just want to bring it more life to your building. I'm also going in with my Copics to add some more colour to these little shutter things that I made because I don't feel like they're standing out against the grey. I really should have used brown, but I'm just going in with my Copics adding a bit of colour. So now that I've got my main spooky house all done, all you want to do is decorate. Now I cut these out on my silhouette. I was already cutting out the building, so I just decided to cut these out as well. If you've got stamps and dies, go ahead and cut them out from that or stamp your images, anything you want. I added some colour with my Copics and all I'm going to do is glue these all over my spooky house. Anywhere I think needs it and then I will add some glossy accents to the spiders and bats to make them stand out more. Now I said not to worry about the glue strands because we're going to use them for cobwebs. So you'll see here I'm making a drop and taking the string that's left behind and popping it right over the spooky house. Now do this a few times, allowing it to drop slowly out my gun and then I'm just taking the strands and popping them all over the building. Really fun and easy. Off camera I created a little fence. Again, I just cut strips like I did for the roof and I've inked them up on the light grey card, I've added all different colours and all I'm doing is gluing them squint and to the side and all along the front and back and sides and then I'll add a wee panel in between. I don't mind if they're squint or they're missing panels, I just want it to look all spooky and abandoned. Well guys, I'm all done as you can see. What do you think? I'm just waiting the glossy accents to dry. You can see the spiders are still a bit glossy. But doesn't that using the glue strings make it look more like cobwebs? I'm really pleased with that. I added a ribbon just along the edge. I just thought it finished it off nicely. And I've added my battery, battery lights inside. Sorry. You can see. Now I've adjusted the pattern so that the main pattern will have this little sort of... I don't know what you would call that. A wee hole in the back. <laughs> so that you can pop your lights in if you want to use them if not you just take that out of the pattern i didn't put it on the layer you'll have to cut that yourself if you're going to do that but you can do that once you've glued it on before you stick everything together you can just trim away once you've glued it and it'll come together and if we pop the lights on let's have a look it's not that dark in here today we've actually got sunshine outside so but you can see i wish i'd got some flicker ones i think that it would look even better but what do you guys think? I'm really pleased with how it came out, especially because all I had in my head was I knew I wanted a squint type building and that's it. Adding the wee fence at the side just to make it look more like a little haunted house, spooky house, I think just brings it all together. Now remember all these wee files that I used, they all came from the Silhouette store, so you could use die cuts yourself. Or if you're very good at drawing, you could probably draw them out. I mean, they were just simple shapes. I just wanted it to bring it together. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video today because I know I did. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. It really, really helps my channel. And if you've not already, maybe subscribe. Hit the bell button to get notifications of my upcoming video. Next time, we'll be back to Christmas. So guys, have a great day and Halloween. Woohoo! Bye!